this is a portal connecting our reality with alternate space-time continua. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm a 45-year-old space nerd. <laughs> Your face look hot. <laughs> there is a space age quality to them. They're all looking forward. We think right here is where to go. You know, free. Welcome to the Galactic Coast Power Hour with John Ennis and Mighty Mike Taylor, the Galactic Guys. Each and every one of us is a crew member here on Spaceship Earth on Vinyl Draft Radio. That is right. This is the Galactic Coast Power Hour, but once again, we are not coming to you live from the ACU Texas studio on the top floor of the historic Gemini building just down the street from the home of human space flight. Nope, my name is John Ennis, and I'm here in the Galactic Coast Mission Control, and I'm joined by my brother in brew, Money Mike Taylor, who I believe is coming to us live from his renovated pool parlor and music slash future podcast studio, also formerly known as his garage. How good is it, Money Mike? <laughs> <laughs> going good, man. Going good. Actually, actually, I'm just in my office. Oh, you're in your office. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll call it. Okay. Gotcha. So everything going good uh, in, in the land of uh, Muddy Mike Taylor? Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything's going good. We're just chilling, hanging out, and, uh, you know, looking to get back to normal life. Right. Well, well, the good news is things are starting to get back to normal a little bit, and we decided it'd be good to, to do another show. Uh, first, because I was, I was getting thirsty. And, uh, and it shows always a good excuse to drink, have a, have a, have a cold beer. And uh, second, because we have a lot of reopenings and new exciting developments coming into play starting tomorrow and carrying over into the special Memorial Day weekend. And joining us to discuss uh, one of the most special of those reopenings, in, in my humble opinion, is a favorite of the show. Yes, we are welcoming back the highest ranked, if not most distinguished guest in Galactic Coast Power Hour history. And that is retired U.S. Air Force Lieutenant General and Lone Star Flight Museum CEO, Douglas Owens. Hey, John. Good, Mike, good to Owens. have you. Good to see you. Glad to be with good you tonight. To, Great awesome, to have you. you know, we really appreciate you joining us, especially on short notice. I know we kind of put this together on the fly. There's um, nothing like and, a 24-hour notice. I can, I can deal with that. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> well played. And I know this might sound familiar, uh, but we want to thank you uh, for your 33 plus years of service and far more, including, uh, you know, adding in the service of your immediate family. So uh, thank you for that, General Owens. Absolutely. And, and I'll call you. I know before you've, you've asked me to call you Doug or Douglas. Uh, so I'll start referring to you as that from here on through, if, if you'd like. Please call, call me Doug. Only my mom calls me Douglas and only then when she's okay. mad at me. So. <laughs> awesome. All right, Doug. Well, you know, like I said, we really appreciate you coming on and, uh, you know, before we get into the exciting news regarding the museum, I, I figure we've all been in some level of quarantine for roughly 60 days or so. I, I was wondering how you passed the time. I, I figure the time management game of a retired general is probably pretty on point. So what, what have you been up to? Well, I, well, much like everybody else, this uh, virus has been the great uh, equalizer. All of us have pretty much been, uh, pr pretty much been locked down. Uh, our last open day with the museum was uh, March 14th. And on that day, I was actually at, at Disney World with my, oh. with my grandkids. So I, we had done a week at Disney World uh, as all of this was unfolding. And the day after we left Disney World, they closed Disney World. So wow, um, we uh, were fortunate to get all of that uh, in and enjoy that with families. And then we came back to the lockdown. Um, during all of that, uh, we still kept the business of the museum going and we learned how to do all of our uh, work uh, remotely and using Zoom and GoToMeeting and we discovered a couple we didn't know about. And um, so we met, uh, pretty much met daily to, to scope out how we were gonna uh, manage and transition the museum from an on-site experience to, um, to a virtual one. And we did, we, my, my team did a terrific job. Uh, very blessed with them because they uh, were able to shift. We were in the middle of spring break and they immediately shifted to uh, uh, to a, a Facebook and Instagram uh, way of doing business and it was great. Awesome. I, I did notice the uh, the virtual, uh, you know, activities going on through social media and everything. And I can also tell you that while you were in Disney World, I was actually at the museum that last day with my family and uh, everything, was, uh, everything was running smoothly then. I, th I think literally uh, we were probably the last uh, civilians to leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw the picture of your son, uh, and that, that's that's terrific. And that's what that museum is all about: is uh, 
as much as I like you, it's really about the, about your son and, and, and those <laughs> like him. Uh, that's who we're trying to inspire. I'm not sure there's much hope for you as a forward here, so we'll work on your son. Right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I think I'm a lost cause. Although, if you can see behind me, I'm actually pretty inspired by uh, space flight, space and aviation already. So, I, I think I'm already a ringer. But um, did you, did you, uh, so you, obviously you all have been still pretty active, meeting daily. I mean, did you have a chance to, to uh, pick up any new hobbies, binge watch any TV or documentaries or read a book or anything? Or I, I <laughs> actually read several books through, through all of this. I'm, uh, I like, um, I like action mysteries. Clive Cussler is a, is a favorite author of mine. So I, I keep okay. up with him and ventured into a couple of others like him. And uh, so I, I like those, those kinds of, uh, uh, of books. And so I actually did some reading. I've spent a lot more time with my wife, obviously. And after two and a half months, uh, by the way, we hit 40 years of marriage on June 7th. So oh, I'm here to, congratulations. I'm, I'm here to tell you that after after 40 years of, of marriage, for us to be able to spend two and a half months uh, and, and still call each other best friends, I think that's a testament to, uh, to a that great was awesome. day. And uh, we're, we're very blessed with all of that. So uh, That's excellent. Well, sure. that, that suggests that you married well. I married well above my station. That is right. Funny. Yeah, I call it, uh, for me, I always tell people I outkick my coverage. You're right. Uh, that's, that's very true. So, Doug, I'm interested to know, has there been any, uh, have y'all taken the time, the downtime to do any remodeling or has there been nothing done at the museum while you're there as far as mechanically or? So, uh, as we are getting ready to open, I mentioned that we had uh, several of us that, um, or several, a few of us that were working daily. Uh, this uh, whole virus impacted us in a great way. So I wound up furloughing 15 of our 22 employees mm. not long after this, this started. There were a handful of us that, uh, uh, that kept, things, kept things going uh, on the virtual side of things. But this is, we locked the building down. We, we, didn't, we didn't go in wow. until, until uh, just a short while ago. Uh, we made sure that before we locked it down, that it was everything was good, set the alarms, and we go in periodically just to check on things um, uh, and check mail and, and, and all of that. But um, we, we pretty much stayed away. So no, we didn't, we didn't do much of anything at the museum. So as we get ready to open up, we brought folks, uh, all everybody's back on board now, and uh, we're about ready to open up on Saturday. That's so, right. Let's get to that. Let's get to the headline. You're reopening on Saturday, uh, Saturday, uh, May 23rd. The uh, after a little bit more than two months, the Lone Star Flight Museum is reopening, and we are excited about that. And we invite uh, all of our friends. I invite all of your friends because you have many, and you are so good about bringing them all to the museum. So um, please, please let them know we're we're there and uh, and that we are opening up. We're going to do things just a little bit different as we open up. Our hours are going to be different. We're going to be open uh, from 10 to 5 uh, and through the Memorial weekend. I, let me check that. 10 to 5 on Saturday, 12 to 5 on Sunday, 10 to 5 on Monday and through the rest of the week. And then we're going to shift back to a six-day week. So we'll be open Tuesday through Sunday um, with um, 10 to 5 during the uh, Tuesday through Saturday and 12 to 5 on Sunday. Um, but this first week that we're open, um, we recognize that the financial challenge has been great on, um, on all of our families. So we're actually opening up uh, this year in the same way we did when we first opened. And that's uh, in the aftermath of Harvey, we offered a pay as you pay what you can uh, to come in and visit the museum. So we're doing that the first week. Excellent. So we, will, we will do a pay as, uh, pay as you can to come in and visit with us. So we encourage uh, all of the uh, families uh, to, to do that. And then once uh, we get out of in, into June, uh, we will have reduced prices, uh, $10 for adults and $5 for, for all kids. And it'll be flat, flat fees for everybody. Oh, wow, uh, what a deal. As long as we still have limitations on what we're doing. So when folks come in to visit us, the social distancing guidelines will all be in place. You'll come in one door. It's gonna it's gonna be kind of a, a directed movement around the museum so that we can uh, help maintain the social distancing guidelines that the governor's put out there. 
Uh, so the sanitization state, uh, stations, um, everybody's wearing a mask downstairs. So all of our visitors will have masks and those that don't um, will we'll provide a mask. Uh, so there will be some, some differences. You're not gonna be able to touch anything in the flight academy and we'll have everything blocked off, but you'll be able to see everything. And that's what's important in all of this. Um, so with those limitations, we thought it best to, um, uh, to reduce our, our prices appropriately until we can offer the full museum experience. So that's what's gonna happen. We're excited, two and a half months closed. This is a really good thing. Absolutely, absolutely. I think Mike, you're about to ask a question, huh? Or you might have been. Yeah, I was. I was going to make a quip, but he actually answered the initial question I was going to ask: was what does a uh, coronavirus museum, you know, look like in in terms of we've seen it before the virus, but then after. But he, you know, Doug basically told us it's going to be like an IKEA. You got to go one way, and then, <laughs> and then. But you know, I mean that's that that's the responsible thing to do it really is and to to make sure that that people stay safe and and keep others safe and i think that's a point that a, a lot of people mistake is you know everybody that that's that's on the the free for all they just they think about themselves but i think it's you know me i've been thinking about you know my parents and anybody i could pass it to so it, it sounds like they're taking steps to eliminate eliminate that concern and really make it still an enjoyable experience so so i think it's an awesome deal i really do i think it's super cool it, it's really important to us for folks to feel comfortable wanting to come see us i think when they get in and and and, and get to see all of the airplanes i think it'll make uh, make the trip uh, worthwhile um, we're we're trying to do this um, and be sensitive to everyone uh, there will be some that uh, think the mask is, is silly. That's their choice, but, but not in the museum. It'll be our choice. Yeah, uh, right. We want right. to make Absolutely. sure that, that everybody that comes in that wants to visit with us will have the opportunity to do that in, in what they think is a safe and inviting environment. Um, I believe this, some degree of this social distancing is going to be with us for months. Um, I think things will relax as we go on right now, you know, where the museums are limited based on uh, the governor's direction to 25% uh, uh, capacity. So we'll be counting heads and making sure that, uh, uh, that we, we uh, subscribe to those uh, directives. Um, and then we'll have lots of folks going by and periodically cleaning the common areas and wiping down the, the surfaces that are, are common to touch. and. Uh, but we can still have a good time. And we're opening this up with our fight to the finish program, our recognition of the 75th anniversary of World War II uh, in Europe. Uh, right. Or, or not in Europe, but period. We just passed the e. day victory in Europe. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things you'll see as you come into the uh, museum, you're gonna see a, a World War II victory garden on the left side. It's, uh, it looks really, really terrific. Uh, oh, nice. There's uh, all sorts of little vegetables planted in, in there to include watermelon. Uh, not, is that, I don't think that's a vegetable, but I like watermelon. And so hey, it we're works. Gonna have, we're going to have watermelon <laughs> in there. And, uh, it has seeds. It's a fruit. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a story behind the Victory Garden that everybody will get to understand when they come and visit, because that was a big thing during the war as, as uh, families, uh, you know, they, they grew for themselves and others. Um, and the kids are going to have an opportunity to do their own little victory garden in a cup, which I Ooh. think is pretty cool. I watched them getting all of that out today. Uh, we're doing social distancing in that so that everybody can stay, uh, stay safe and healthy. But the kids will get to take home a little, a little plant, um, uh, a seeded pot that hopefully will grow over time. Their own little well, how, garden. Well, well, how fitting that, you know, they had to sustain themselves during World War II. And at its, you know, anniversary, here we are you guys are helping foster the idea of teaching kids how to do that at the very high. I think that's, I think that's really fitting, especially with the COVID-19 theme that, you know, everybody's been forced to endure. So I think that's super cool, man. And uh, don't think I haven't thought about putting a garden out in the backyard, even though my, <laughs> my thumbs are black, but you know, I mean, I could, I could turn them green with a, with a, with a couple, you know, swirls in a Kool-Aid jar, I guess. 
We have got some tomatoes out in, in our box gardens as big as your fist right now, and they're about ready to ready to come off, and we've got a lot of them. So we're, wow. we're going to be in tomatoes for a while. <laughs> right. June, June to July are tomatoes, right? Yeah. June to July. So that's cool. Well, I like the fact that the museum always has something hand. I mean, obviously, there's tons of exhibits that are hands on for the kids. But I mean, there's always like an extra thing, uh, you know, whether it be uh, paper airplanes or uh, I think uh, over over the Christmas break, uh, the kids made like little, uh, if I remember right, like airplanes out of uh, out of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, you know, even that last day, it was there was like a kind of a kind of I guess they'd call it a. a a hunt, you know, with the, with the photos and everything. And, uh, you know, so there's always something hands on for the kids to do to, to kind of grab their attention right from the start. Well, we're going to have to ease into this a little bit because right. of, because of the social distancing, a lot of the hands on stuff, we're going to have to have to ease into and see, see what works. Um, it will be really easy, um, to disregard the social distancing guidelines and, uh, we want to make sure that for everybody's sake, my employees and the staff and, and all of our visitors, that, uh, that we do this smartly. Um, so we've, we've put a lot of thought into, into how we open and, and how we're going to operate this. But I do know one thing, and this, this comes from years of, uh, of military experience. And uh, Mike likened this to uh, you know, coming, out of, uh, uh, coming out of World War II and during the war. Um, I know as, as a military leader, uh, when it came to how we dealt with, uh, with challenges, where they be operational challenges or, or anything else, everything is about assessing and mitigating risk. And that's exactly what's going on right now. Um, my view on this, and it is my, just my view, we can't stay locked up. We are, uh, um, our nation is, uh, is built on, uh, on, 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 a, on a society basis, and that society basis is, uh, is, is one of, of engagement with, with people. We're uh, social economy, creatures, yeah. Our economy is a capitalistic uh, uh, society, a capitalistic economy. We have to engage to be able to, uh, uh, to compete in the marketplace, and you can't do that entirely from inside your house. And so we have to be able to get out and we have to be able to figure out how to mitigate risk and to do this smartly. I am in favor of what the, what the governor is doing in this regard. And I think what we are doing to help meet his guidelines, I think is a smart thing. And I think over time, I think we're going to see ourselves come out of this. And, um, and I think we will be stronger for this. There may be some changes. Um, and I don't use the term new normal or new reality. I'm not doing that. Because I think there are there may be some small behavior changes that, that come of this, but by and large, we want to get our we want to get our our marketplace back to where it should be, and we want to get our folks out and get our um, get people engaged uh, uh, again as conditions permit. We just need to do it smartly. Absolutely, that's my paid political announcement. And no, I like that though. <laughs> I, th I, th I think you nailed it. I think you nailed it. So I, I was curious because truthfully. I want to believe because I remember when I got the email from the from the museum saying that uh, it was either on a Friday or it was maybe it was actually that Saturday saying this is the last day you know we're going to shut down and and, uh, and of course yeah, I packed up the kids and we went straight there <laughs> to get the, to get in that last day but uh, I was curious were at that point were you in contact with the governor or was there I mean because you all seem to be you know right on top of things because literally not you know within 24 hours of you making that announcement pretty much the rest of everything shut down but it seemed like you guys were a little bit ahead of the curve you know and i was just curious was that just uh some foresight or or did you get tipped off on something or was that just uh you decided got together decided that was a responsible thing to do or, or how y'all kind of came to that that decision but it, it was the latter. It was the responsible thing to do. We, I would like to think that we are smart enough to pay attention to what's going on. Right. And I will tell you that my last few days at Disney were mostly about the museum and, and, and working back and forth. With folks. Yeah, I guess that, that wasn't fair, right? That, it's probably hard for you to really get, get that fair. vacation that you deserve. Uh, uh, but, but I think what we did, I think we were, were, were looking out at the, uh, at the, at the landscape and, and, and understanding that this was 
uh, what was uh, at least initially going to be bad and that there were going to be some pretty severe reactions to, uh, uh, to the cases that were popping up in, uh, in New York. Um, so I thought we did, did do what was responsible. And if uh, that in first email that we sent you said that we were going to be closed until the end of the month. And then before we got to the end of the month, we, we let everyone know we'd be closed indefinitely because it, it looked like it was going to be a long-term uh, affair. I will also tell you that in, in a business like this, and I think this is true of, of, of most other businesses, if they're smart, we've stayed engaged uh, at the, with the different uh, nonprofit and museum associations that are out there uh, personally with personal contacts to see what uh, other museums and other nonprofits are doing around the country. Um, and I think doing that has helped us uh, frame our uh, way ahead and our approach to all of this as we do look to open. Um, it's, uh, it's important to, to us to, to, to try and stay on top of things if we can, and there are things that we miss. Um, but we hope those things remain small and, and that overall the decisions that we're making are smart ones. Well said, well said. Well, well but you, you know, and I know you, you actually have been busy during this break. I mean, obviously you've been staying in touch with your leadership at the museum, but then also you, uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure you were one of the driving forces to be uh, about the, uh, the fight to the finished flyover that, that uh, took place over Mother's Day, correct? Uh, it did, uh, and I know you you got to see it. You sent me the note that you were, I guess, were out at Ellington when. when yeah, no, I was there on the on the runway with the media. Yeah, I was, you know, I actually uh, saw you from a distance, but you're busy, so I didn't want to interrupt you. So. What, what a great day! Uh, what yeah. a wonderful day that was. Um, as we open up, we're opening up with our fight to the finish program, as I said, which uh, uh, recognizes uh, and honors and commemorates the 75th anniversary of the end of the war. And as uh, we were originally scheduled on May 8th to um, do our Texas Aviation Hall of Fame induction ceremony. That's right. Because of circumstances that obviously has been postponed uh, uh, until September 2nd. Uh, but as we looked at where we were on doing things virtually, our board chair, Scott Rizell, came up with this idea of, um, of a small flyby on, on VE Day. We knew that the, um, the group Arsenal of Democracy had a big flyby scheduled for Washington, D.C. on VE Day with over 100 airplanes, wow. and it was canceled. Okay. And so as that was canceled, we looked internally here at Houston, and, and uh, Scott Rizell's small idea turned into almost two dozen airplanes on that day, taking to the skies in, a, in an aerial review, if you, if you will, uh, to fly about a 120-mile route around uh, the city uh, and region of Houston to honor uh, our greatest generation. And it was, it was just absolutely terrific. Uh, we had um, lots, uh, several different kinds of airplanes. We had P-51 Mustangs, B-25, T-6s, BT-13s, uh, Twin Beach 18s, a um, little airplane called an Avion. We had a couple of those that, uh, that, that flew. It was, uh, it was really, really terrific. Um, as we led up to this, the media just jumped on it in a huge way, and uh, they w helped us get the word out. So on the day of, there were thousands of people that came out on that beautiful Mother's Day to see this wonderful event take place. And in, this, in the number two airplane of the lead formation, there were 250 photographs of World War II veterans that flew that route uh, in honor of, uh, of loved ones uh, that had, had participated in the war. My dad, oh, wow. my dad flew in that formation, which, oh. I just thought, which I just thought was terrific. And um, it was really, really a marvelous thing. And the media stepped up and, and, and embraced the concept and the, and the event. And as part of the media crew out there that day, you know for yourself what, what that turned out to be. Yeah, and I know you all got a lot of national media attention too. I I think I saw a video from like you know some of the some of the morning shows and all kinds. So I think there was a good incredible uh, media attention. Yeah, good morning America live stream the the thing. That's what I was about to say. I you know I was afraid I was gonna get it wrong, and I've learned doing this now that I'm not a hundred percent. Don't say it. So I'm glad you did. <laughs> right. It was, uh, <laughs> it was just a terrific day, and the weather was beautiful. It was oh, it was beautiful. Day. We did it after lunch. 
and people just came out by the thousands in the in parking lots all along the route of flight and uh, the um, FAA and uh, were, were terrific partners in this whole thing and it came off without a hitch we were just very blessed for such a such a pretty day no, it was a beautiful day. I, you know, I think a lot of people got some much needed vitamin D that, that day, you know, getting out there and getting some sun. How, I mean, you had obviously, you know, obviously there's quite a few planes that are based at Ellington. Um, but like, I mean, how many different sources? I mean, how many different, I mean, planes came from how many different areas do you believe? I mean, most, it, you know. Most of the airplanes were from the Houston area. Okay. A significant number of them were, came uh, as part of the, uh, three commemorative Air Force wings, the CAF wings that are, are around Houston. So we had sure. a number of them that participated in the uh, in the event. We had a couple of airplanes, I think, that came out of the Dallas area. Um, our T six, our yellow T six, led the led the review, um, and our uh, chief pilot uh, Charlie uh, Tuna Hainline, he was the the the, the, the flight leader. For all of this. Um, and Scott Rizell, the, whose idea it was, was in that number two airplane in his Twin Beach, and he carried the uh, the ammo box with all of the pictures in it. Okay. And um, it, was, uh, it was really, really a, a, a neat deal. Social distancing uh, was, uh, was uh, exercised. Uh, there was briefings that were done virtually before everybody showed up. Uh, there was, the, when we did the pilot briefing, it was done in a big hangar where folks could, you know, kind of separate a little bit. And uh, uh, it, it just turned out to be a great day. That's, awesome. that's got to be a challenge for a brotherhood where y'all are used to being in such close quarters when you're on the ground together. But uh, it, it is, but everybody, everybody understood. And, that, right. and truly, it's just, it, as with all that we're going to do with this, this is about, it really is about respecting other people's space. Absolutely. And, um, until they invite you in, in close, I just, I just keep my distance. And, right. And that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, absolutely. That's what you do. So, you know, we talked about the, uh, the fight to the finish and I, and I imagine this was a concept that's been in the plans at the museum for, for a while. And obviously you've had to pivot a little bit and, and hold off, but uh, so, you know, and obviously things are going to be a little, a little different you know there's gonna be an adjustment period at the museum here for the few weeks but I guess is the fight to the finish is that a big theme coming up at the museum you know for, it is. For, for, yeah absolutely it is and it and it was kind of it, the, the concept started off and the program initially was going to run from May 8th which was VE day victory in Europe day uh, through September 2nd uh, which was VJ day victory uh, over Japan uh, and we were going to bracket this with the Texas Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremony on May 8th. And because of the timing, we were going to do a World War II victory celebration on September 12th. And it was, the program was going to kind of be uh, bracketed on those both ends. We have a new World War II exhibit that will open up on June 19th. We had put everything on hold because of the virus, but we've Sure. We've um, kicked that back in and we'll look to open it up on June 19th in our temporary gallery. Um, you'll, you'll see some other things that will happen through this as well to include um, um, around June 19th, uh, in addition to the, um, uh, in addition to the uh, World War II exhibit, uh, you'll see uh, an original um, poster exhibit from, from the era, from, from World War II. One of our, our, our folks is, uh, uh, one of our volunteers is, um, is a collector of, of original uh, poster work. So recruiting oh, wow. posters, um, bond posters, movie posters, uh, and he- Loose lips, sink ships. All of that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, right. They are, they're absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Um, matter of fact, I'll pull one of them up here and let you, I'll show it to you on a, a oh, on excellent. iPad, but um, we're, go we're going to do a display of this, these original, and, the, and these literally are 75 plus years old. So wow. we'll do a display of these in the hang, in one of our hangers on, for, for about 20 of these. Uh, you'll see uh, sometime over the coming months, all of those photos that we flew with um, will now become part of a, another exhibit uh, honoring our, it'll be a, a, what will probably be a semi-permanent 
and living exhibit to honor World War II veterans uh, and their pictures and stories in, in, in another of our, uh, our galleries. On September 2nd, uh, we're going to roll out our newly restored TBM Avenger. Okay. And um, when it comes out, it will be painted in the squadron livery of uh, George H.W. Bush. Uh, oh, nice. That will be the 76th anniversary of his shoot down uh, in World War II in that airplane. Midway, yeah. Wow. And, uh, so we are, are looking forward to, uh, to getting the airplane out and uh, we've had some neat sponsors to, to help with that, to include the Gary Sinise Foundation and the McNair Foundation, both that uh, contributed to help restore that airplane. So our intent, and it is still underway, I just checked on it today, um, it'll go in for paint here in July and um, when it comes out, we should be ready to, to roll it out to the public on the, in, uh, on the 2nd of September. So, so a lot of neat things around World War II. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it and along with our collection of, uh, of warbirds that we have now, I think we'll give the public uh, uh, another way to appreciate the sacrifices of the greatest generation. Excellent. I can see you, uh, one of uh, one of my favorite warbirds, and I think I think you've told us in the show before. It's your favorite over your right shoulder there. Uh, <laughs> the, that would be the, the thunder. Truck. That's our P forty seven. So that's Tar Heel House sitting up on my back. Uh, on my, yeah, on my bookshelf out here, um, and it is. That, that's one of the neatest airplanes we've got in the museum. So. And probably one of the most dynamic paint jobs I've seen. You know, I mean, I've seen it in calendars, covers of calendars, and book covers. I mean, it's it's. Uh, yeah, people, uh, photographers love it. <laughs> it takes a, a really terrific nose-on picture in the air. It's, uh, oh, because it's, of the yellow tips, I it's guess. A pretty wicked. Yeah, it's well, a just that. Yeah, plane. it's it's just such a such a muscular looking plane. It is, um, but at any rate, I, I think the program as it as it continues to unfold with the fight to the finish flyover being the kickoff to this. Uh, we were anxious to get the museum open and get people in to, to see uh, to see what we have again. Excellent. So, Excellent. Doug, how long does it take to get uh, from an idea to a new plane <clears throat> or to a new display into the into a museum? It depends. It it, it actually depends on on a lot. Like um, the condition of the airplane. If the uh, funding, the airplane, funding. Is, if the airplane is flyable, well, the first thing is whether or not we want the airplane. Uh, we don't uh, we don't take anything and everything that is that is offered to us because it needs to fit in with our our mission and with our um, focus on Texas aviation. Um, so we need to really, unless it's something extraordinary, come up with a, a tie to Texas that warrants it being in the air in in our one of our hangars. We have limited space in the hangars and we, we need to make sure that we use that space to the, um, you know, in, in the best way possible to, to, to further our mission. So that's the first thing. Second thing is its condition. Uh, we're not a museum that restores airplanes by and large. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, uh, as we uh, are, are acquiring airplanes that they're in pretty good shape, unless we take on a project specifically like we did the Avenger. And the work on that's not being done in the museum. That's, we have uh, contracted that out to be done. Um, we've got another one that's in work, a BT-13 that's in work up in North Houston uh, right oh, wow. now that should be done here in a, in a, in a few months. Um, but we've done it on a, on a as we can basis. So what we would really like is to have an airplane come in that's full up, that's full up operational, and we can roll it right in. And, and <laughs> right. Right in. That doesn't always happen. So, um, uh, so that, that connection to Texas is kind of key. You know, and I noticed you all, uh, the museum has moved. They're actually, well, we'll say put a, a large display upstairs of kind of the, uh, I guess, the history of aviation in Texas. Uh, I think it was upstairs. Actually, it's the story of Ellington. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. It was the story of Ellington, yeah, yeah. And that, that, that exhibit actually started in our temporary gallery and Correct. we moved it up into a permanent space up, upstairs. Let me show you this po poster I got. Please. So this is one that will go, go in. Take a look at this. Oh, oh yeah. I've is seen that, that one. Is that cool or what? 
That is that cool. That is super awesome. And that's going to be a vintage poster. That's going to be the from, real thing. From the well, era. This is, this is every bit the real thing. This is about circa 1944. Wow. wow. So look at, the, look, at the, look at the guy. Look at the dude right there. Yeah. Who's he look is like? That, is that Ashton Kutcher? Doesn't that look like him? <laughs> oh, you <laughs> nailed it, Mike. It's like Ashton Kutcher. Unless, unless Ashton's aged very hey, nicely. You might have got punked. Uh, <laughs> this, the that most was, elab that most was elaborate exactly punk prank ever. <laughs> that was exactly who I thought about. Wow. Oh, my God. That was undeniable. Here's another one. I was one. thinking Harry Connick Jr. I mean, I don't know, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not on top of, pulp, of pop culture. Take a look at this one. This is a very oh sobering one. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That is. Um, so there, we've, we've got access literally to probably thousands of these posters, and they're rigid. They're all original. Oh wow! And um, so um, our our volu our contact that uh, that that flies and works with us uh, um, these are his, and um, so we're we're just very grateful that we'll be able to share these with. Um, oh, so so this is a private collection. Well, actually, these he's given to us, and so we're using these, and then he's going to provide some some of his own uh, that. Uh, that he still has, and uh, it'll be a combination of. Um, of oh, so it's going to be permanent. He's he's donated all these all yeah. these items. But wow, but we're going to at least temporarily put these out for the public to see. Excellent. Before you can build the permanent installation. Uh, whether it goes out permanently or not, we'll we'll see. But it certainly will go out for the next several months, and uh, and so that everyone can see them. Um, but they're terrific. They 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 are just a terrific one. Um, I'm excited. Years ago, my, my sister for Christmas got me, you know, and obviously these are just uh, reprints of, of, you know, a bunch of World War II posters and, and just the messages. That's why I said, you know, loose lips sink ships. I've got that on the wall in my, in my, in my garage. But uh, I mean, just the combination. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, look at that. Here's a neat recruiting poster about 1943, I think, for the Marine, Navy and Marines. Look at that. Yeah, that's probably at the height where the, they were. Oh, that was that was a horrible war, man. It really was. It was there was way too many civilians killed in that war. Way too many civilians. Yeah. Greatest generation. Well, that's an exciting. That's it. So so you know a lot of uh, new uh, and exciting things coming to the museum. That's that's awesome. It uh, most certainly is, and we're excited to open the doors again to the public as soon as we can. So have you been getting any feedback from, I, I know Mike and I have been talking about, you know, uh, you know, something we'll probably talk about later in the show. We, we, we might let you go, you know, before we get into mm -hmm. some of the other things that aren't tied to the museum, because I have too much respect for your time to hold you hostage. <laughs> but, uh, you know, one thing coming up next week's obviously the, uh, the space, SpaceX launch uh, on Wednesday, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. You know, it's going to be nice to see uh, American astronauts uh, launch from American soil and American rockets. But, uh, Mike and I, you know, we had been planning on kind of, you know, covering this event uh, underneath the uh, the SpaceX exhibit, the new SpaceX exhibit at Space Center Houston. And I know Mike's, you know, obviously works a lot at Space Center I Houston, was, actually. Was, I was there about the two hours ago. The, uh, 747 there, huh? I was there about two hours ago, right under the rocket. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right, right. Yeah. So, you know, but uh, but last you told me, Mike, as of yesterday, they're, they're looking at a July opening still. I, you know, and I think they're holding firm with that, you know, from, from the, the sources I have, it's going to take them a month to get back into operation. So okay. they're looking at bringing people back as soon as, you know, respecting the governor's orders, respecting everything that's going on. And from what I've heard, it's, it's, it's going to be a new look too, just like Doug said, it's going to be, you know, you've got to respect the social distancing. You've got to, uh, you know, You've you've got to mitigate mitigate damages, as Doug so eloquently said, and I think that's awesome because, you know, you you you've got to man, you've got to right now. I know there's 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 two sides of this. There's the people that are really, really carefree, and then there's the people that are super cautious. So meeting those needs in between, I think, is 
is a serious challenge, but I think it's still a serious threat to, to anybody who's exposed. So limiting exposure, I think is key. And I, I think they're going to, they're going to be able to, to, to handle that and make that happen. And so it, it's going to be a different landscape, just as Doug said, they're, they're going to, they're going to do what they can do. And they really feel lucky to be opening back up right now. There's a lot of museums that aren't going to be opening back up and, you know, can't weather this storm that we did this economic storm that was, you know, I, I guess economic tsunami. I mean, it was, it was, I mean, just devastating to so many, so many businesses and entities. So. Well, you don't have to tell me that as somebody that publishes a magazine that's all about getting out, yes. and eating at restaurants, listening to live yeah. music, visiting attractions. I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, man, you know, this. I know you were hard hit. I know you got hit. But, hard, but no, man. but hey, but, but I'm coming out of it stronger. You know, uh, got, you know, we've got a lot of exciting things, uh, you know, the, the new app for the scene, the new app building business for our clients, uh, you know, uh, and I've lost 20 pounds. So, yeah, I, I'm coming out of this stronger than I went into it. <laughs> You know what? Unfortunately, I gained weight because we've been we've been cooking, and I cook with butter, man. I cook I cook with a lot of butter. I mean, what's wrong? Yeah, with we're butter? not getting the kitchen. You know, we we yeah. been, apparently we've been relying on those restaurants more than we should. So uh, yeah, you take those out of the out of the place. Well, I can I can cook and Carrie can bake, and both of them take butter. All right, but I was getting to a question for the general. Although, so Mike, one thing I was going to say when I ask you is, is I've noticed. You know, I always I always compare Space Center Houston to the Visitor Center at the Kennedy Space Center, you know, I, I kind of think of them as, you know, kind of a, almost like sister organizations and they're actually opening this weekend, I, I believe. And, and then for the general, I was going to ask you if, if you've had a lot of, you know, I mean, I guess you kind of mentioned you, you've been in communication with a lot of the museum organizations, but if you've gotten feedback from other, you know, museums or like uh, venues, uh, destinations, I mean, ha have, you know, what kind of feedback have you gotten from them? Uh, you know, and what kind of, you know, I mean, uh, a little bit of a look at the landscape. I mean, are you, you know, are you opening here in Texas probably a little bit ahead of some of the other similar museums in other states or, or what's, do you have any input or, or kind of for us on that? It really depends on where you are. Yeah. Um, because uh, the different museums in uh, places like Washington State, California, they aren't opening. Yeah, I'm guessing the Intrepid uh, Museum is probably not going to be opening this weekend. Yeah. Probably not opening. Gosh. Um, most of us in Texas, uh, and, and a lot of this falls down under the museum uh, leadership as to whether or not they can comply with the, the governor's directives and all of this. If they can, uh, and they can offer a, um, an experience that is worth opening, then, then it's a thing uh, that that you have an option to do. It's still our choice. Uh, I think we're in the early group of folks that are opening. The Houston Museum of Natural Science opened last Friday. Oh, wow, I didn't know that, uh, okay. Did. Um, I didn't either. They were, they were the first to open. We could have opened on the 1st of May, uh, but we, we weren't in any, according to, by directive we could have, but we weren't in a position to do that. Sure. We had initially targeted June fifteenth uh, to open, as we were looking at possible open dates. But with the success of the fight to the finish flyover, we wanted to build on that um, uh, on that experience and the press that we got off of that. So we've pushed ours up a, a little bit to the Memorial Weekend, and I think I think that will play well for us. Such a fitting weekend to open back up, you know. It I, is. I believe. Yeah. It is, and, and we're, we're, we're fortunate uh, we're fortunate to be able to do this. I uh, made a comment to a few people here lately that uh, uh, in our original open date for our grand opening at the museum at Ellington was September 1st, 2017. Mm. 25th of August, it started to rain. <laughs> that was Hurricane Harvey. That's right. And uh, so our opening was delayed and we never got the big celebratory grand opening that um, we had uh, had hoped to have and uh, all of the all of the fanfare and everything that we built up for that opening literally went down the drain with the rains of Harvey. Um, it's not often that you get an opportunity for a redo. And with us having been closed for two and a half months, while we're still not opening with the big fanfare, 
uh, the fact that we can open, uh, I think, is a, is a blessing in and of itself. And I think people will look for uh, an opportunity. Some will look for an opportunity to get out, and we want to provide that safe, uh, safe space for them to do that. The small victories. These are small. They are. Um, but we're, we're as excited now as we were then about opening. Uh, and we're going to be able to, to do it coming off of a wonderful event with the Fight to the Finish flyover. Um, we've worried and concerned ourselves for a long time, for three years now, that even with us being at Ellington, while you guys know we are there, many in Houston don't. They don't right. know that we're there. They think we're still at Galveston. But I will tell you, after the Fight to the Finish flyover and the press that we got off of that, Houston knows where we are now. Awesome. Yeah, I remember, I think in a previous show, you told us, uh, told us a story of a bus uh, full of kids, uh, right. you know, on the causeway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're almost there. <laughs> Turn around. Turn around. Come back this oh, way. Oh, man. Um, but after, after, the, the, after last, uh, the, the 10th of May and the flyover that we had, people know where we are. At least the tens of thousands that came out to see the airplanes. Um, and we will be on, I think we're on the, on page two of the Chronicle tomorrow with our opening. Ooh, which excellent. I think, which is, I think is a cool thing. And uh, we're, uh, I think we're gonna get another shot at, at this. I think that we'll, that some of the other museums will envy because we're gonna get to do it this way. Um, so we're ready and we wanna um, invite all of the city of Houston out to, to be with us. Not all at one time, cause I can't let y'all in. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So 25% of Houston today, 25% tomorrow. Uh, I wish. Um, <laughs> so, but we're, we're looking forward to it, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. The, the good thing is it's a huge facility. So there's, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, it's not a small, small well, they, space. They although there's airplanes, so yeah. Although there's, it's full of, full, of, full of attractions, full of warbirds. But, uh, you know, there's some, there's some good space. So I imagine even at 25%, you know, and I'm not going to ask you about, you know, specific capacity numbers, but I imagine, you, you know, you, you let a good amount of people in there. We, we, we can. Um, and we're, we just want to make sure as we first open the doors, we need to see how this is going to work. We need to see how much supervision needs to be in place, how people handle themselves. Um, if people don't respect uh, the, the social distancing uh, guidelines, we need to figure out how we're going to react to all of that. Um, it, it, it's all about um, respecting uh, the, the rules of the road here as we go into this. Um, and I think people can still have a, still have a good time in all this, and, and we, we certainly invite them out. Bring your family back. Oh, absolutely. No, I, I think we're going to – I think, you know, we were the – Last family to leave. I don't know that we'll be the first in the door, but uh, maybe the first weekend. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, no, we're looking forward to. It. My son's actually a couple times during the uh, during the uh, the you know shelter in place, the quarantine. He's he's mentioned that you know he's he's a, he's a huge fan. He's he's uh, maybe even maybe even as uh, to the level I am. <laughs> he's, uh, he's he'll be go he's seven years old. Yeah, he'll be going into uh, second grade. He's a young young second grader. But uh, I think he's seven. That's right. I think yeah, he yeah. just made Doug's week. <laughs> or is he six? Actually, I think he's still six. Yeah, he's six. Yeah, I'm sorry. But he's, he'll be turning seven. Yeah, six and ten. Yeah. They're just your kids. Yeah, they're just <laughs> – And they're awesome. They're awesome. Yeah, but he's – no, he, his favorite – actually, you know, as an Air Force – maybe I, I know as an Air Force general, I shouldn't admit this, but his favorite plane right now is the Tomcat. So, you know – and I think actually we bought the Tomcat – you know, they'll pull back actually at the gift store, which, you know, the, the gift store at the museum is, you know, I mean, that's like, I mean, that's, that's, that's like Christmas for me. I mean, I love that place. I mean, you know, it's, a really, it's a really nice gift shop. And we're, it's we're a great gift shop. And yeah, actually, I've got a number of things on display from the gift shop behind me right now. I'm not sure how much y'all can see, but, uh, you know, I've got, I, I used to call this the Galactic Coast Aerospace and Aviation Museum, my, my office, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although I don't have the uh, don't have the thunderbolt that's over your shoulder, which I you know which looks really good. <laughs> it does. It does. Well, very exciting. So opening Saturday for the first little over a week till the end of the month, it's pay as you can. That's correct. Then even after that, it's going to be discounted. Not only is it discounted uh, flat rates for attendance, but I believe if my research is correct. 
and I've got a crack crew of researchers. Uh, you're, you're offering discounts on, the, uh, on, on some of the memberships too for a little while. We are. Don't ask me what they are because I can't repeat them, but, that, but we are. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Then uh, I won't say what they are either then. Well, go ahead if you know what they okay. are. Okay, I think it's uh, $25 off of uh, at least two of the, uh, the you know, the, the aviator. And unfortunately, Navigate. for some reason, my laptop decided not to go online. So all, all my prep that was on my other computer, I emailed a couple things over. But, uh, you know, so I've been doing this kind of blind. But I think it's gone pretty well anyway. But, uh, <laughs> well, well right. Doug, I mean, we, we'd be happy to, off. Yeah, yeah, we'd be happy to keep you on board or, uh, you know, I know I, we, oh, yeah, you joked in an email reply that you wouldn't be drinking beer, but you might have a, might have a margarita. Is there a margarita in there? This is a double. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome. We uh, we're really excited about the reopening of the museum and uh, all the all the upcoming uh, exhibits and, and things that you know that are honoring the uh, the 75th anniversary of, of uh, the end of the war in uh, Europe and uh, you know in September of the end of the year uh, of the end of the, the Pacific theater of the war there, which brought an end of the war overall. And uh, we just really appreciate you coming on and joining us uh, on the you know like I said I think uh, I gave you a little less than 24 hours notice but uh, you. You came in strong with double margarita and everything. So uh, we really appreciate having you on the show. Well, John, Mike, uh, thanks so much. I, I really do enjoy coming in and chatting with you guys. And uh, um, you, you, you treat the, the museum uh, very well. You're, you're tremendous supporters of what we do and the mission that we have. And uh, that's, uh, uh, you, you practice what you preach. You bring your family, your friends, all of them out to, to visit with us. And we, uh, we thank you and appreciate you. So. Anytime you want to talk airplanes or museum or anything that we're doing, 24 hours is just fine. Just give me a holler. Okay, I'm, I'm going to hold you to that. I have a feeling we're going <laughs> we're, we're to try to we're going to try to squeeze you in more because we love having you too. So uh, you absolutely, know, absolutely. And, and maybe uh, we'll we'll talk some more about the A10 next time we have you on. That that would be terrific as well. Oh my God, we we didn't say one thing about the A10. <laughs> I, you know, I, I had a couple things lined up, but uh, you know, but uh, yeah, a couple. couple that is, that is I always, weird. I always like the uh, I, I like the I like the joke that Mike made, and then I like I like the uh, Doug's uh, reply. You know, Mike talking about it stalling if you if you if you held down the trigger on that that Gatling gun too long, and then then uh, General said something about it, the plane actually flying backwards. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Right, how many people think that really does happen, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, the, awesome. the gun's about the size of a Volkswagen. That's all I'm going to say. That's Man. Awesome. And they yeah. keep trying to, you know, over the years, I, I mean, I remember it seems like they keep trying to kind of do away with it, but then, it, you know, and replace it. But it's, it's just, I mean, it's the workhorse. Well, I'm not going to talk. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to. You know, but I just, uh, you know, it just seems like a very effective weapon, especially, uh, you know, you know, in support of the troops on the ground. For what, so. it, was, for what it was designed for, it does a, does a terrific job. And there's uh, lots of uh, uh, soldiers and Marines that uh, truly appreciate what the A-10 uh, brought to the battlefield. And uh, I felt uh, very fortunate uh, uh, to fly it when, uh, when I did. So it's a great airplane, and still is. Yeah, it is very well, effective. Yeah, I hear that the, the the one of the troops on the ground's favorite sounds is that cannon. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Well, we know you've got a you've got a lot to do because uh, you know your you guys are the museum's reopening uh, in you know a little over twenty four hours. So uh, we'll uh, we'll let we'll let you go and enjoy that. <laughs> Enjoy that margarita, and uh, we'll we look forward to having you back on the show. You know, sooner than later. Uh, we'll, Doug, we'll, you know, thank and you. Uh, maybe you know, you know, I'm not, I'm, don't mean to put you on the spot, but it would be a dream of mine to actually maybe do a mobile show at the museum. Ooh, Ooh I just did that, didn't I? That you know, sounds we, awesome. You know, we probably could make something like that happen. Boom. Uh, we just need to need to work out the work out the a, a good date and all that stuff. We probably could make that happen. Ah, uh, excellent. Man, that just made my day. Nice. All right, you guys. Thanks very Thanks. much. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, 
Uh, again, all of, uh, all of you come back out to the museum on Saturday, uh, May 23rd, 10 o'clock, we'll open the doors and uh, hope to see you there. If not then, Sunday or, or Monday, uh, either one will be, uh, will be there waiting. Pay as you can and uh, come visit that great gift shop that John mentioned. And uh, right. <laughs> if you can't find it, uh, Tomcat, take home an A10. There's one there. Right. Okay. That's right. You know, and I don't have, a, I don't have a scale model of an A10, you know, so that's, that's what I need to get. All right, you guys take care. We'll talk hey, to you hey, later. Thank you a lot. Thank, thank you, you for your lot, time Doug. and service, Doug. So long. Excellent. I love having him on the show. Man, man I them. feel, man, it's, it's an honor to have him on. And I just, I just feel warm in the heart every time we do. And I love what they're doing with the museum, the reach out to the, the kids and the, in the STEM and, and actually, you know, I think last time we had him on the show, you know, he, you know, he talked about all the school districts that have gotten, you know, I probably should have mentioned this when he was on, but uh, STEM talked about all the school districts that are involved and one that's not is CCISD. And actually, thanks to uh, my wife, who's pretty involved with uh, over here at, at, at Ed White East Em, uh, you know, we, we started at least conversations. We're trying to hook up uh, the principal who, who's also a, a veteran, you know, and get him uh, set up a lunch with him and Doug and, you know, see if we can see if we can get, uh, you know, get CCISD involved with the East End program over there at the museum, which, you know, kind of fits since it's touching. I mean, literally they're, you know, CCISD Are, is about as close to. Uh, surely CCS, yeah. CCISD is involved in the, uh, the program at uh, uh, Space, Space Center Houston. Houston, correct? They might be, you know, and I mean, they're, you know. Surely yeah. they are. Yeah, they might be. I mean, they, I mean, it's it's pretty impressive some of the things they do. Obviously, my kids. But uh, see, they both so to so the that's space, though. But aviation is a you know, sure. I mean that's that's a completely different different deal. But I think just as important. I mean, you can't you can't go into space without flying, right? Right. Yeah. Got to start somewhere. Yeah. So we've been talking about obviously the museum, uh, you know, opening back up. But uh, you know, I'm happy to report a, a lot of places are opening back up. I mean, it does seem like things are getting a little back to normal. Um, you know, and, and you and I, have, you know, talked a little bit yesterday about, you know, I mean, all the, all the, the, the both there's breweries, a lot of brew. I mean, obviously all the breweries have been open. Uh, a lot of them have been selling uh, beer to go. Um, but some are, some are taking advantage of the, uh, of the, of the, the new news from the governor allowing, you know, bars to open at 25%. So I know Saloon Door and Backfish and I think Val. It, it's, it seems to be about 50% of who's going to open their doors and who's not. And, you know, even visiting all their websites is kind of ambiguous. You would have to call them and ask them, which is, I did, I did to a lot of breweries, call and ask and see you know, are they going to be open? Are they, is it still just, and it's about 50, 50. Most people are, you know, still, you know, getting the carry out. So, or the, they call an order, you do it online. You have almost contactless uh, carry out from a lot of these breweries, which is, which is freaking awesome. You know, me and the girl, and hopefully, we can that, a, hopefully that, hopefully that we maintains. can take a road trip. We can go, you know, collect our beers from our three or four breweries, make it home, boom, boom, boom. Sadly enough, it, you know, usually what we get doesn't last the night. <laughs> usually <laughs> drink it all. And then, and then we're like, well, shit, man, no one's open Sunday. But this a lot of them are. But ordering ahead of time, I guess being ahead of the game is so important in the COVID world. you got to be ahead of the game. You can't be like, I want now because – it's either sold out or you've got to wait a day for the payment and for them to can it and all that. So I think it stopped me and Carrie quite a bit about being prepared and being ahead and, you know, trying to look forward to what's going to happen rather than, you know, uh, me hungry now. Me <laughs> yeah. Immediate gratification. Now. Yeah, exactly. No, it's, it's really been uh, impressive to watch how, you know, both, the breweries, I mean, you know, like Val, I mean, you know, here, here, you know, we're talking about Valensons and Pearland, uh, you know, they've been a hundred percent on-site sales, you know, draft basically, yes. you know, so obviously that was gone. So he pivoted, got a sealer, you know, got a, you know, canning deal and, and, you know, set it up through, you can actually order it in advance, you know, pay for it in advance through his website, um, you know, uh, 
contactless drive through pickup. I mean, you know, he's so, you know, he's, so he's now, not you know, I'm thinking some of these venues are going to be in breweries and, in, and even restaurants are going to be stronger as a result. I mean, obviously, they, you know, a lot of them took a huge hit. Some, some worse than others. I've actually talked to some scene clients. I mean, there's, a, you know, I'll be honest, there's a couple scene clients that were so ahead of the curve and thinking out of the box, like Red River Cantina, you know, they, they, they've actually, I mean, they've, they've killed it, you know, and, and actually I just talked to the general manager at Barge over here in Seabrook and, you know, um, I guess they've been pretty aggressive the last couple of weeks. They just had the biggest weekend in the history of their place, even bigger than their huge pirate festival last weekend. So, you know, but then there's been other places that haven't been allowed to do anything until tomorrow, you know, which I'm really excited about some of the spots opening tomorrow. Scout Bar is opening tomorrow. You know, you know which, and, uh, you know, I've really, because – because humanity's horrible, I have been almost completely off Facebook for the last like month and a half because it it seems like a constant argument between this and that, and it's like it's like everybody's trying to divide everything. But I I really liked uh, 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 something that Dimitri said, and you know he's he he wants the economy back up together. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's got a lot of businesses in Kima and he wants his stuff, but he's, he's still being cautious. And I think it's, I think it's really important that the economy gets started, obviously. I mean, doesn't everybody want the economy to get started again, but doing it cautiously, I think is, is probably the more important thing, but it, man, it's time. It's time to get it started. It's time to do something, man. I mean, yeah. you're, you, you're, you're at a breaking point where it's like almost, do we just get everybody infected and we find out what happens and just, you know, get over the deal? I mean, you, you get constant news changes. This, this virus is still, it, it's, it's five or six months old. So we still don't know. It's, it's a very frustrating thing for any individual to get through. Me and my wife, we, we've stayed home. We've, We've, we've gone to, you know, the breweries and got the beers and done the takeout and done the stuff. We've gotten beers, like you said, from Red River. We've gone to Baca's. We even got some wings from Scallywags one time. We, we've been trying to at least support them. But you got to understand, they, you know, they had their economy fucking cut off, man. Cut off completely. And, you, man, you got to understand that. You got to have some kind of compassion for for, for that kind of situation, because without it, when we come out of this thing, there's going to be nothing. And we're social creatures. Even Doug said that we're social creatures and we love interacting with each other. And that's our economy is interacting with each other. And I, I think that's just an important, important part of our lives, man. Oh, absolutely. So, so doing it respectfully is our challenge right now, right now, hopefully right now, hopefully right. in a year from now, me and you are going, we're, we're going to hold a remember COVID party where we all hug and kiss each other on the cheek and, and, <laughs> you know, and, and chug beers simultaneously. Who knows? I don't know. Man, I do look forward to crossing paths with you and actually drinking beer with you when we're not looking at screens. Dude, for real. Fun. Yeah. For real. You know, we're going to, uh, I mean, you know, I was thinking about this, uh, you know, because there's so much live music that's, you know, and I was worried about the future of live music, but uh, there's so much live music opening up this weekend. And I was thinking, man, I mean, when was, uh, what was the last show I went to, you know? I mean, I guess it was, uh, I guess, but anyway, it doesn't matter what show it was, but I mean, it was, it was in March. I think it was, I think it was at Bones or Scout, but, um, you know, I mean, just excited to see you know, all these venues, and of course, you know, there are mo a lot of more clients of mine, just seeing them, you know, just with all this awesome live music, that's actually some of them, you know, any venue that had a kitchen, they've actually, you know, let's face it, they've been open already, you know, and, and now the venues that, that, you know, have, that were, you know, 51% or let's say, you know, okay, let's face it, even some 51% places have been open, but they've been, you know, but they have kitchens so they can pull that off. And, and who am I to, complain about somebody opening early i mean you know gosh not 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 this guy you know you know because everybody's just trying to survive but uh you know tomorrow i mean tomorrow there's an awesome show should we do a weekend brew should we do the weekend brew should i hit the should i hit the music hell yeah okay hell i hope yeah. i hit the right button i didn't check this in advance oh yeah
So we can drink this. The Galactic Coast Power Hour Weekend Brew. That is right. It is time for the Weekend Brew, and I'm just excited that we get to uh, share a Weekend Brew with you all. So, uh, you know, we talked about, you know, already, you know, this weekend, the, the Lone Star Flight Museum is opening back up. But uh, there's a lot of exciting, a lot of other venues opening back up. And, uh, you know, I'm going to start with one of my favorites, Scout Bar. Uh, starting tomorrow, Friday, May 22nd, they've got a – now, the thing about Scout Bar is it's limited tickets. I think they're going to literally cap off at 125 people, you know. So, uh, wow. it's going to be a very intimate show. <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the joke – um, well, the spasmatics are Saturday. Uh, tomorrow right. is the Dope Show and oh, Mouth shit. for War. So the Dope Show, I believe, is a tribute to Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Our Manson. buddy Chris Harding, who we had in the show not too long ago, is the manager for them. I think right. he's going to be doing actually an interview with them before the show for uh, Punk Star Radio. And then Mouth, Mouth for War is a tribute to Pantera. So yes. if you're into some pretty hard, uh, you know, I, I, I think that, that's right up my Mike's alley. And then, uh, for all the soccer killer. moms out there, we got the spasmatics t- uh, Saturday at Scout Bar. Which, dude, they're good too, man. Oh, they're awesome. Yeah, they they're put on awesome. a heck of a show. Yeah. And they're players too. They they like to play it down, but those guys, those guys, those guys <laughs> play, man. They play. <laughs> yeah. And uh, actually, right now, as we speak, a guest of the show, Chris Hardy's over at Jackie's Brick House. He started at six. He's continuing on to 10. So, uh, you know, I mean, head on over to Jackie's Brick House. Uh, they've got live music all weekend long. You know, uh, Friday, they've got uh, – actually, Saturday, they've got another guest that we've had in the show, Ojos Rojos, you know, which is one of our more lively Hell shows yeah. I think we've ever done. Uh, yes, they'll be playing the patio at Jackie's Brick House on Saturday, 2 to 6. Velvet Punch will be playing that evening in the main stage. Uh, I'm just scrolling through. You know, actually, also tonight, Brittany Doyle's over at T-Bone Tom's. Uh, let's see who else. I'm just, I, I know there's a couple other guests we've had on the show. They're playing up. Uh, one of the – so I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So between Thursday tonight and Monday, there's 12 different bands about to uh, – about uh, playing at Barge in, in 295. Three bars. <laughs> yeah, playing at Barge, uh, you know, Barge 295 in the yard. Oh, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, so, you know, in, in, in a kind of cool show on Sunday, it's going to, there's actually four bands playing, starting out with Sick Duck, then uh, Homebrew, which is a 311 tribute. And then, Mike, do you remember a band called Face Plant? Yes, I do. Not, yeah, yeah. I, think they have, I, I always have, they have a song called Tap a Keg. So, you know, but, uh, yeah, I think they're a, a kind of a Pasadena area band that's been around, but uh, they're having a face plant reunion. And uh, this is all and then followed by Big Richard, who's played this area quite a bit. Another another popular band. This is all at the yard at Barge 295. And, and we've talked about the yard before because it's a relatively new music venue right on the water along the North Shore Clear Lake. It's part of the Barge 295 Empire. You know, the barge obviously took over a. Uh, the Turtle Club, the, the only floating tavern in Texas. But then they also have all this land, and they built a really nice outdoor music facility. And let's be honest, right now, you know, based on the conditions, having an outdoor music facility, you know, stage with a lot of space, I mean, that, that might not be a bad model. You know, I mean, you know, it might be better than, the, you know, some of the other spots. Um, but, yeah, a lot, of, a, lot of, um, a lot of cool live music coming up. Uh, I mean, there's live music at Bones. Uh, they have Turning Point on Friday. You know, just uh, just just a lot of you know. I mean, and you can go to the scenemagazine.com. Uh, there's there's a, a a live music lineup for the entire weekend. Uh, you know, with all the venues, times, what bands. But uh, yeah, just really excited to th- see things kind of come back. You know, then we talked about the breweries, and uh, so you know, so yeah, it's uh, things are starting to get back to normal. But you know, they will not be 100 percent back to normal until Money Mike and I can do a show together. <laughs> absolutely so we're in the same room right right in the same room uh you know cheering but Clinking um beers. yeah Ba-ching. well man that was uh i mean we're we're hour nine minutes in i mean you know i know you just sent me a message or you know you uh <laughs> is, is, is it time to you know you've been enjoying beer maybe a little longer than i is it, is it time to wrap this bad boy man i i, I think so man i think we've had okay. a good time we've uh We've uh, we've had an awesome guest and expressed our views on several current issues, but uh, 
man, I always love chatting with you and I always love, you know, drinking beer with you, man. I just, I just crave the time when we can do it together. Right. No, me too, man. Me too, my brother. And, uh, looking forward to, uh, doing that, hosting that show over at the Lone Star Flight Museum underneath the B-17. Hells yeah. And then the next one under the Falcon 9. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. We didn't even talk about that. I mean, but that's okay. I mean, just, uh, yeah, this, uh, literally less than a week from today, this is an event I've been waiting for forever. Um, you know, it seems, it just seems so long ago. It seems so much in the future and now I can't believe it's here. It's privatized space care. Man, it's been (laughs) nine years since astronauts launched into space from American soil. Yeah. History is about to be made. I mean, for the fifth time in American history, we're going to launch American astronauts on a new vehicle and not only a new vehicle, but they're going to be launching from America on an American rocket. From a privatized organization. uh, And the cool thing is, you know, it's a SpaceX demo two is what they're calling it. Um, It's going to be two, literally two astronauts are going to, you know, actually one of them lives right across the lake from me in Timber Cove. Not sure where the other one was. The only reason I know that's because there's some media coverage about all when he, you know, they, they landed in Florida. I think, I think actually yesterday they landed in Florida, did a little press conference. I think, you know, he left a uh, day before, but um, the cool thing is, is, you know, this is going to be on a, on a SpaceX Falcon nine rocket and it's going to be launching from the historic launch complex 39 a. And if you're a space enthusiast, you're pretty familiar with that launch pad. That was a, uh, a number of different uh, Saturn V Apollo missions, including Apollo 11, launched from there. I think uh, 82 different space shuttle missions, including STS-1, launched from there, and the uh, the final uh, the final one, uh, the final space shuttle mission, STS-135. So, uh, and that's happening. It's, it's oh yeah, I forgot what the the, it, the time was funny to me. I, don't, I forgot what time it was. Thinking. Oh yeah, 3:33. So it's 4.33 p.m. Eastern, which, of course, for us is 3 – hold on. Is that right? 2.30 yeah. or oh, 1.30. 3.30. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I got that wrong. Yeah, my conversion. That's right. We're, we're – yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, then it's not 3.33 our time. <laughs> All right. But, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's exciting. And we'll probably talk about that uh, next week because, uh, yeah, I mean, that's going to literally just have happened before our next show unless we try to squeeze in an early show, which we probably won't. But who knows? I mean – Never know when I get thirsty. Thanks to meet again next Thursday. All right, man. We're both repping St. Arnold's, I see right now. Pachink. Cheers. Cheers, brother. All right. Here Cheers, we go. Cheers, man. Space travel. Beer. Does this look infected? Beer. Boating. Did we mention there's beer? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week, we think. Thursday nights, 7 p.m. Galactic <laughs> Coast Hour Hour. <laughs> I got to pee. Cheers, buddy. All right, man. See you, bud. Beep, beep, beep.